Hi, and welcome to 2019 Paper 1, Question 4 of the Leaving Cert Order Level. So as usual, if you want the set notes I'm working off, just send me an email at shanetroy at gmail.com. That email address should be in the description below. I'd suggest pausing the video and just having a go at the question on the screen to see how far you can get. And if you're back, okay, then this is part A, that's worth 10 marks. So we're looking to get something off the ground to get us at least the low part of three. Now this is a kind of a standard method. If it comes up, I'm kind of in my head going, you be, because it's something you can practice and it should be this level of algebraic manipulation it should be something that's in your comfort zone. Okay, now if, if not, you're kind of looking here with this algebraic fraction. Now it's called algebraic fraction because each of these is a term. This is for lack of a better word, uh, a fifth. Okay, some half, okay, and then a tenth. So if you see there, there's a link between those three numbers and the common denominator there, or a number that they can all divide into, or a common factor, okay, factor, okay, would be actually 10, okay. Five divides the 10 twice, two divides the 10 five times, 10 divides the 10 once. So if you want to simplify this and get rid of those numbers on the bottom, if you multiply across by 10, so each term by 10, Okay, okay, you're gonna get uh, uh, rid of that. That's the, the crux of this question. Okay, once you remember you have to do that, the rest becomes fairly standard. So if I go down to the answer here, just to make it prettier, I've kind of I've shown that I've multiplied this fraction by 10, and this fraction by 10, and the last fraction by 10. Or for lack of a better word, I've multiplied every term by the same number, which I'm allowed to do in an equation. The reason I've done that is so that this would happen. 10 to 10 goes once, they cancel. 2 to 10, okay, goes five times. That's where I get that five. Five to 10 goes twice. Now, this expression is the same um, expression. Okay, it's just, there's no denominators or no bottom numbers. Now we go left to right and remove brackets. Two times three X is six X. Two times one is two. Five times X is five X. 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. The 47 doesn't change. Uh, it's kind of simpler again. So I want my x's on one side, my numbers to move to the far side. And I'm going to kind of simplify them at the same time. 6x and 5x is 11x. Now, 10, so negative 10 plus 2 is negative 8. I'm going to, in the next step, bring that across to the other side. Okay, so negative 8 becomes positive 8, going across the equal. Then I'm going to do that little sum. 47 and 8 gives me uh, 55. Now, if you see now, it's, the numbers are kind of working out for us. Okay, if I, in my head, I suppose, ask this question, 11 times what number gives 55? The answer might be obvious as being 5. Or if I want to just finish it off using algebra, if you bring the 11 across, it was multiplied on the left, and it becomes, or it goes across to the opposite side of the equal becomes the opposite operator. Okay, it doesn't change sign to negative. It changes from multiplication to division. That's a common error. And once you've realized that that's what's happening, okay, it's just use the calculator. 11 to 55 goes five times. If you wanted to check, and if you put five back in to all the X's and then worked it out, you should end up with a situation of left side of the equation equaling right side. But you're not asked to, to do that here. So in one sense, why waste time? Um, and that's it. Now, B here is worth 15 marks. They give you a hint and they say solve. Okay, so you're looking for an answer for X and Y. And they give you a hint saying it's simultaneous equations. Now, what's going on here is this is a line, okay? And this is a circle. Okay, so there's what's most likely happening here. And I, you know, I looked for the answer a minute ago. This circle, I know it has center zero, zero and it has a radius of square root of 13. So that's supposed to be a circle. And with, there's either two things happening, actually well three, I suppose. They don't touch, okay, they touch, the line touches once, or the line touches twice. If it touches once, it's a tangent. Okay, if it touch, touches twice, it's a chord. Um, and you're trying to find out those points of intersection. So either the one point of intersection or the two. Okay, so the two points there. 
that's got messy, so let's clean it up. With this kind of method, okay, you I suppose there are two choices. There's the elimination method and the substitution method. The elimination method, to my knowledge, doesn't won't work. Okay. Um, so the only method you have left here is the substitution method. So I'm looking here at um basically taking my simpler equation and rearranging it for x or y. Now, to my opinion, rearranging for x would be easier. I'm going to go to the answer here. So I've taken that up here. So x minus 5y equals negative 13. If I bring the 5 across, okay, so I'm going to end up with x equals negative 13 plus 5y. So I now have an expression that gives me x. Now, if I put that back into the same equation, back in here, it's not going to be of any help to me. But if I take that new expression for x and put it into my second, more complicated equation, in this case, the circle equation, well, then I've done that here. So instead of x squared plus y squared, I have minus 13 plus 5y squared plus y squared equals 13. Okay. If you look at that expression and look from left to right, is there two different unknowns, like an x and a y anymore? No, there isn't. There's only y's. So this is solvable. Okay, so once you know it's solvable, you can just go ahead and do it. And that's where the complication happens. Okay, so I'm basically, first thing I'm doing there is I'm expanding this negative 13 plus 5y to be squared. I've done that over here. And something to be squared, you're multiplying it by itself. Okay, I've done that there. There are different methods for multiplying a two-term bracket by a two-term bracket. I'm using one of them here. And I'm writing out, now the way I do it is I write out the second bracket Okay, uh, twice. Then I'm multiplying the first term into the first bracket and the second term into the second bracket. Then when I do that, if I go left to right and do it, okay, I end up with uh, minus 13 times minus 13 is positive 169. Okay. Um, minus 13 by 5y, same thing as negative 65y. That's there. 5y by negative 13 is also negative 65y. And then 5y by 5y is the same thing as 5 times 5 is 25. y by y is y squared. Okay. Now, if I simplify this, I can only do it by adding the y's. Minus 65y, take away 65y is the same thing as negative or minus 130y. So this expression in bold, I can now bring back into the bigger, the bigger workings. All I'll do now once I do it is look left, right, and try to simplify. Join those two y squareds together. So 25 y squared plus 1 y squared is the same thing as 26 y squared. The y's don't change. And if I bring the number across here, okay, I know now it's, it's at least I can recognize that it's quadratic. Quadratic is going to be solved. Okay, so you, to solve a quadratic, you need everything on one side. So I brought the negative 13 across. So it's 169, take away the 13, get me this 156. Okay, now if you recognize it, and if you don't, it's going to make things much harder. There is a common factor here. Okay, and you can divide across by 26. You end up with the equivalent quadratic of y squared minus 5y plus 6 equals 0. Now that's a quadratic that can be solved using one of the fast methods of factorization. So I'm doing it here. Okay, so I'm kind of looking for, uh, now right up here, I'm looking for this, at least this is the method I use. And there are many, many methods for this. Just depends which one you've learned in school or which one you, you, you want to focus on. But I'm looking for all the numbers that multiply to give 6. Okay. Now if you think about it, okay, that would be uh, well, 6 by 1. Okay. Or it could be negative 6 by negative 1. It could be uh, 3 times 2. Okay. Or it could be negative 3 times negative 2. All those numbers multiply to give positive six. Now, which of those four numbers or sets of numbers will add to give, uh, was it negative five? The only one is this. So the rest can be excluded. So I can that tells me what my two uh, factors are. They are y minus three times y minus two equals zero is the same thing as the quadratic we factorized. I could have used the minus b formula, but that would take more time. And to be honest, there's not much space left on the page when you're doing this question. Now, I've the I have the.
value of my factors are my factors, which if I can rearrange, gives me the value of the factors. Now the logic here is you've got an expression times another expression and that gives zero as an answer. And you, the, I forget what the theorem is called. It says that you can, the logic being if, if one thing by another gives zero, one of the two things must be zero. I mean, example could be one by one would be one, one by two would be two. If you're multiplying two numbers together, you always get a positive or negative number. You never get zero. For you to get zero as an answer, one of these has to be zero. Or both of them can be equal to zero. That's how you can separate them as two separate equ equ uh, equations. So if y minus three equals zero, then y equals positive three y minus 2 equals 0, then y equals positive 2. Now, this particular situation, okay, whatever it is, again, that's supposed to be an xy diagram, it is a circle. I have two y values, okay, so this crosses twice, okay. It's the worst drawn chord you've ever seen in your lifetime. So it's not a tangent, it's a chord. Now, the either one of these the original equations will give me the x value. I would argue it's only smart to take the simpler equation. And to my mind, that simpler equation is the top one. I already have it rearranged as an expression for x. I did that here, so I can use that. So I've done it here for one of the y values, the one y equals three. Put it into that equation and calculate it out, I got two. So the, the coordinate of one of the points of the chord, or one of the points of intersection of the chord is two, three. If I put the other y value in, uh, as well, I got the coordinate minus 3, 2. That's it. That's my two points. And I'm not asked to say if it's a chord or a tangent. Well, I have seen that in, in a different question or a circle question. That would be something they might ask. Okay, so I think that's the end of that. Yeah, that's question four. So thanks very much. And maybe see you on question five.